Hello and thank you for enrolling into this video course. My name is Kasia Zmokwa, I am a digital artist, photographer and a graphic designer. I teach in the digital art area at Udemy. I am the author of Photoshop Creative Cloud Digital Art Pro Techniques Premium Course at Udemy. In this course, I am going to teach you how to create a low polygon abstract background. The process is flexible and fun, just follow my steps and you will be surprised with great results in no time. In the first section of the course, I will show you how you can generate amazing low poly vector files. The low polygon background images can be simply used as jazzy desktops, they can be part of your more complex vector illustrations or even used in Photoshop as a composite for photo manipulation techniques. In the second bonus section, I will teach you how you can implement the low polygon images in graphic design with the use of Adobe Illustrator and we will finish the course with a logo design. At the end of the course, you will be able to transform bitmap images into amazing low polygon vector graphics and you will also learn how you can implement the low poly images into a logo design in Adobe Illustrator. Before we jump into the first lecture, I would like to mention one important thing. We are going to use a free application triangulator that was designed by some staff Russia. The application is free to use, you just need to run it under Google Chrome browser. It is important to use the Chrome browser as the app doesn't work under Safari. Ok, let's go ahead and move into the first lecture. So first we need to create a bitmap image, JPEG in Photoshop, and then we will use this image to transform it into vector image, the low poly background in Triangulator. Let's create a canvas in Photoshop. I'm pressing Command N to create new image. For me the size 1500 is fine. I'm on the Retina display. If you are on the regular display you might be working in smaller size. So I'm pressing OK. White background is fine and I'm going to pick now brush tool and let's use some really vibrant colors. This kind of magenta would be perfect. So my brush settings are opacity 100, flow 96. I think it will be perfect for this image. Let's make few very simple strokes. That will be it in magenta and then let's change color to another very very saturated shade. I'm going to use this kind of orange. Let's create some free strokes. Then we can add another layer on top of this one and let's use the same orange. I'm going to press G now and use the bucket tool to create the flat color and this layer I'm going to change in blend modes to multiply and the opacity to maybe 22%. I just don't want to have plain white background as the subtle orange shade will give me more interesting variations when I transfer it to low poly vector. I'm going to create another layer in top of these two and now I'm going to use white color with brush I'm pressing B. The settings remain the same. And let's create some little highlights, maybe some lines on the side. Ok, let's experiment with this image. I'm really curious how it's going to be transformed in Triangulator. So all we need to do now is to save this image as JPEG. So and the quality we need to set it as very high. 80 is perfect. 
so I'm just going to set it as example one. Okay, that's it. We have our file prepared in Photoshop. Let's see now how this background is going to work. What results are we getting in Triangulator? Please download the zip file Triangulator, open it and click on the index HTML file, right click and select open with Google Chrome. The application will open in Chrome browser, however you don't need to be connected to the internet. Once you have the app uh, installed in your hard drive, you can work with it. It's working perfectly even if you are offline. You don't need internet connection. So we have our application opened and all we need to do now is to drag our image into this area. So let's open Finder. I'm going to take the image that we just created and drag here. Okay, we have our image now visible in the Chrome browser area and this bar allows us to make adjustments to vectorize the image. I'm going now to enter full screen mode to see a little bit more of the bitmap. And now all the fun starts. Triangulator gives us two options. We can either add the triangular mesh manually by clicking on the image area. Let's experiment a bit. So now I'm clicking in the image and adding vertices. Notice that I can either click outside and decrease the size of the shape or if I click inside of one of our triangles it creates further division and that way we can make the shape more and more complex. So this is the manual method. I'm going to use now this button and delete all the vertices. And let's experiment now with the second method. The second method adds the vertices randomly, automatically. Let's click on this button and let's see what happens. Notice that each time I click on this button, the application automatically adds 25 new vertices and creates random division. The really fantastic thing about this option is that the triangulator app will never give us two the same pictures. It's not possible. Every image will be unique, every image will be different because the script will generate the vertices in a random way. So we can keep adding the vertices or if we are not happy with the result we can always delete all the vertices and start the process all over again. Let's have a closer look now at this slider. When I start dragging this little slider towards the left, it starts decreasing opacity of the vector layer. The opacity of the mesh layer gets lower and lower. In case of our abstract artwork, it's not really helpful because we are not concerned about keeping any details here. However, keep in mind, if you would be working on, for example, portrait, you might use this slider to decrease opacity of the mesh layer to be able to have more control over the vertices and to add them adjusting to the background picture that you will be using. So as I said, in our case, it's not really relevant. We can keep it at 100% and we can add maybe a few more vertices. And let's now save the image. If we are happy with the final result, we can scroll down. So that's, that's our figure. That's how our 
bitmap that we have created in Photoshop looks when it's transformed into low poly mesh in Triangulator. So now let's export our image to SVG format. Let's click this button. Now we have this option available, so we need to click here. Now right click on the image and select Save as. This will save our artwork as vector file SVG. I'm going to select the folder that I used before and just press Save. SVG is a vector format. It can be further processed in any vector software like Adobe Illustrator or Sketch. Let's open the file in Illustrator. So this is how the thumbnail in Finder looks like. Let's open the file in Illustrator. I'm going to right click and select Open with Adobe Illustrator. And now, as you can see here, the SVG file is a vector file. I can select all of these triangles, the whole background, the whole artwork is fully editable. I can further customize, I can further change the colors. So let's add now background. As you can see, the shape generated by the app, the triangulator, doesn't give us clean square background. We can quickly fix it. Let's open the layers panel and let's add new layer. And I'm going to select this color. So I have my color sample here and I'm going to pick this shade. Now I'm going to draw square over the image and drag this layer underneath. That way we have created very neat background. Our illustration is ready. As you can see it is a vector. We can increase the size to whatever size that is needed and when we zoom in the image doesn't lose on its sharpness since it's a vector image.